Good evening, everyone. And welcome again to a nice, at least in the north, a cold day. And uh, for the people not from the north, a warm day. Or maybe a very pleasant day, right? So I welcome you again to this edition of Circle of Peaceful Progress. Now, all of us, I think, in our childhood, or later, saw the movie Sound of Music, right? And in that movie, there was this song that said, these are a few of my favorite things. And today, when I got up in the morning, I think I have mentioned earlier also that every day when I get up, there is a song in my head. And we had a uh, a session on that also about which is the song that you get up to, if you recall, right? So this was the song that started playing in my head and I said, interesting, so what am I supposed to do with it? And I just thought for a minute and it came to me that, yes, today is the day to ask people that what are their favorite things or what are their desirable things which make them happy, which make them feel a sense of contentment. It may be something very small or something, you know, as a memory, something that has been with them as a nostalgia, something to do with their own social setup, maybe their personal development, maybe their skills, maybe in relationships, maybe even in the field of finance. Now, I wouldn't say just money because we're not here to think, you know, that if I have money, that is one of, it is everybody's favorite thing. There's no doubt about it. But what we do with that money is something more, more important. So if certain things or situations or memories or nostalgia or items are there, which are in your personal space, which are your favorite items. Let's see that what is the message that Radical wants to give to all of us today, individually, to understand why we are so attached to the things that we have. Is it a good attachment? Or is it something that we are holding on to as a security or a reason for growth. What is our association with it? Is it something that is still needed or am I not capable enough to learn what detachment means? Is it still there as a brilliance to teach me that final detachment? Or is it there in a, as a reason to remind me that I just need to celebrate every occasion and every moment in my life that I experience? Because the memory may have gone, it could be, you know, like uh, one photograph that surfaces of maybe your child's first birthday. And it is a favorite one and you have kept it because for you, that photograph where the child is absolutely enveloped in your arms, cuddling up to you, or maybe you're kissing the child because it's the first birthday. It's your favorite. Is it a happy memory of today? Your child has grown up, gone away, left home. Times have changed, circumstances have changed, situations have changed, energies have changed. There is growth for the child. So what is that photo reminding you of now? Is it still brings you that joy or there is a feeling of, you know, a vacuum. I wish things could go back to like that, you know, that way I, I had a, personally wonderful relationship with my child. So sometimes the favorite things can also lead us to understand what is it that we need to look into our space 
look inside us, look within us, and also look outside us to understand the reason that those favorite things are still in your space. So, who's going to come up first to tell me their favorite things? Raise your hands, all of you, one by one, and then we can start the process of understanding. Let me see. Who all can I see? Okay. So right now we just have Seema. Nobody else wants to have any understanding or reading because based on their favorite things. That's interesting. All Hi. right. Hi, Seema. Good evening. Tell me. Good evening. Uh, yeah. So after I read your message, I just like gave it about a two minutes thought. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the first thing that came to me was uh, being in nature and mm -hmm. basically, uh, more specifically, a meadow with a, a stream going through it. Though I mm -hmm. love all kind of nature, like it can be, you know, trees behind me and I wanted everything. Trees behind me, aage thodi dur se mujhe mountain dikh raha hai, you know, sab kuch chahiye. But yes, but this was the most like where I was was a meadow with a stream going through it. Okay, so, so that, yeah, continue. So All that right. was, you know, that's my favorite thing to do. To, I mean, like that's what I want, I like. <laughs> Okay, so tell me, and this uh, is fun. Yes. Achha, okay. have, you, have you experienced such a uh, place or a stream or a meadow or is it a wish that you have that that is your favorite no, thing? No. And you this is, want this is a wish. I have been in ah. nature. I've been on mountain trails. I have uh, otherwise experienced like, you know, a desert or even the ocean or the mountains. Mm -hmm. But uh, this particular thing is been there. Like I know they, I visualize it often. Right. This and how does it make you feel? It makes me feel so good. I can see the daisies there. I mean, it's very vivid. Um, can I ask you a question here? Please do. Have you been? Okay, this is not a criticism. Huh? This is an observation. Were you or have you been treated as a princess in your childhood? Uh, you've asked me that before. But uh, I would say the girls were really, really treated very well. Like it was the best for them. Okay. So the best for them naturally makes them have very vivid imagination and very satisfying and pretty dreams. Okay. Now a meadow with daisies or flowers with a stream, it's very poetic, beautiful. There's no doubt about this, right? But as you grew and mm -hmm. as you experienced life, that means mm -hmm. the realities of you know, uh, getting married, running a home, dealing with situations, dealing with relationships, dealing with trying to handle how to bring up my own children, trying mm -hmm. to be the best in everything, got you mm -hmm. so caught up in the daily humdrum of life that this became a fanciful wish that I wish that could happen to me sometime. It does, as you said, yes. that you've been going on treks, you've gone to the beach, you've gone everywhere, but this dream sequence has remained with you, right? And for yes. you, it is still a fulfilling place where you would like to be. So, the world is a small place now. Did you ever try to look for such a place and go for a holiday there? Uh, I have been wanting to go to the Valley of Flowers because I've not seen it, but somehow that's how I visualize it. And right. uh, yeah, that is like, 
you know whenever i think of such a place uh, like okay. this uh, it's the, the word just comes to me valley of flowers Super. so okay and you know where the valley of flowers leads to no 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 i don't know it's like wo himkun sab ke udhar ko hai na exactly exactly yeah, yeah. now again look at it metaphorically right now okay so now i am talking from the other side of the coin you got married you lived a princess life <clears throat> where the girls when i say princess don't take it in the wrong sense i, I mean um, yeah. yeah so treated uh, you very well yeah absolutely so given the best treated the best the best mm-hmm. education the best life yeah and then uh, living a life on your own learning to manage on your own learning to take decisions on your own sometimes good sometimes bad sometimes wrong sometimes right right mm-hmm. and at the same time uh getting so involved in trying to be the best of everything the best mother the best wife the best uh, uh, relative the best aunt the best everything that mm-hmm. you kept growing with this mm-hmm. dream your relationship with this dream was the reason for your growth but at the same time what was happening was that you were growing without realizing spiritually mhm okay when i say spiritually <clears throat> it doesn't mean that you're going just to all the temples etc but it was there for you to start learning to go inwards when we start to go inwards within ourselves is the time that we start to discover to connect to be related to the real me the real mm-hmm. self and the valley of flowers ultimately leads you to a spiritual point that is a connect with one of the masters of the universe mm-hmm. right okay. are you getting my drift the yeah, absolute right so metaphorically probably you are placed at a point where you have done it all even in radical with the help of the beautiful consciousness of radical you have traveled so far in your journey where you have learned to let go of a lot of things that may have been reasons for holding you back when you started becoming aware of yourself mm-hmm. but with radical you have learned and the masters and everything have been helping you to as a princess taking you forward so today you are at that point where the dream could become a reality where you convert it into connecting with the masters as beautifully as simply as the valley of flowers does that make sense ah oh, sounds just too beautiful something where i would like to be right yeah okay so let's see what radical also has a message for you today okay uh, all right you. okay so it says wow left appreciation chakra Mm-hmm. that is fl26 reminder to yeah. value and appreciate self and others that means appreciating valuing and i won't go in the negatives because we are progressing in the positives we are learning to celebrate moving forward in that celebration <clears throat> so it says appreciation brings out the best in me and others around me can i share something here yes yeah, sure so i told you about that incident which i had recently when i had gone yeah. out yeah. right and yeah. i told you me carol ka sar kha rahi hu in din se right yeah. and yeah. this is today is the 11th day Okay. and i am writing this 21 times appreciation brings out the best in me and others so you see no wonder you're seeing the valley of flowers no wonder you're seeing the beautiful stream 
No wonder you are seeing that connect the path that leads you to Him Kun Sahab. Well, all the Him Kun Sahab is there within us. Get connect to that Him Kun Sahab that is sitting inside you. And your flowers and your valley and your stream, everything will fall in place. It's just too unreal now. I mean, like, you know, the moment you started, I had over. I just wanted to laugh. I didn't know. Radical. Now, the other people right now who are listening in, raise your hand or clap, give a clap to Seema because look at the joy in her voice. Can you sense that joy that she is going through? Right. So this is what is happening to all of us. We are blessed. These Friday programs that we try, I try to, you know, mix and match and try to bring in a little difference. But ultimately, the learnings and the guidance that Radical gives us. Today, I am referring to the Pothik. Okay. Oh, sorry. I have put it on blur. So I am referring to the Pothi today. Why I am showing it in case somebody is new over here. Okay. So this is the one giving all the answers today, right? So Seema, are you happy with what is coming? That means continue with the art of appreciation of self and others and yes. continue delving deep into that valley and see yourself singing all the beautiful songs over there, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And thank you, Dina. Thank you. You're welcome. Most all welcome, right. Seema. Yeah. Okay. Aarti, aapke liye to another level wo hai. Reena had when you said na, see like how happy she is. So she sent two claps. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We all, you know, but we all I feel tell it. You, after, <laughs> na, I think you know me better than I know myself now. <laughs> no, it is not that. It is just that we know each other because we have decided to be open books to each other. Because we have decided to be uh, you know, um, transparent. And transparency is a very, very tough thing. People don't like to be transparent because they feel they may become vulnerable in front of others and maybe the others would take advantage of it. Now, when we bring in this, maybe others will take advantage of us. That is the point where we are allowing others to take advantage of us. We are allowing them the moment we think of anything uh, doubtful or negative, I won't call it negative, I would more call it doubtful, etc. The moment we do that, the moment we create that energy, you know, it's like, uh, the, have you seen um, these um, athletes, you know, who run the track, the track event? So they are, you know, mm -hmm. always on charge. It's like a panther waiting. They're on charge. And the moment the word go comes, they run, right? So this negatives are all there sitting, you know, in that position. All right. The moment the indicator comes, we just have to rush in. Why allow it? Because life is easy. Life is effortless. And we can make it a lot of fun. Correct? Mm -hmm. So there yes. is so much simplicity. I mm -hmm. It's taken and, me a long way to come here to talk like this. Yeah. Because otherwise, it again not Now it's okay. You want to judge me, judge me. Yeah. Because there is a neutrality that has come in and that's okay. That's wonderful. Yeah. That is where we all want to reach and be. And that's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being here. Please wait, listen to all of us. Don't go away. Yeah, next we have Shikha. Yes, Shikha. Can I see you on camera? It will be lovely. Are you already on camera? Oh, yes, yes you are. Yeah. Hello, ma'am. Yeah, hi. Yeah. Ma'am, so my favorite thing these days is like eating. I don't know. Okay. I okay. feel like eating uh, so much that uh, it is so hard for me to diet and I've like put on my so much weight and all okay so i'm really obsessed for eating right so uh that makes you happy or is it just an obsession 
it's an emotional eating which i am doing so okay yeah okay so is this emotional eating is there something behind it that is uh, bothering you troubling you or is sitting heavy in your space or are you just enjoying the winter i don't know which part of the country you are right now i'm in delhi you're in delhi okay yes, so is is it because of the weather or is it because there is some um sort of uh, you know compulsive eating only happens under two circumstances one either you're in a lot of stress anybody or there is some emptiness that we are trying to fulfill and that mm-hmm. emptiness could be anything both of them are going parallel okay. at times it is stress at, at times it is emptiness right right so uh why do you think you have chosen food as an option um uh, there is a, a short story behind it uh, i i never used to have so much food earlier mm-hmm. then i went to a wedding and uh, it's like uh, i'm talking about uh, some 18 years back mm-hmm. i guess more than that or yeah 18 19 years back so i went to a wedding and there one of my cousin told me that you should always taste at least because mm-hmm. i never used to have anything outside also much bahut little and ghar ka i used to eat so mm-hmm. after that the way my i don't know how come the life changed that i started liking i started eating so much slowly 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 that i started uh, finding my happiness in eating if i am depressed or i'm feeling lonely or any problem is there okay and that okay. too rice is like i cannot resist rice okay all right <clears throat> so shikha if there is an emptiness in you or a, some kind of a vacuum in you are you working on those vacuums or are you working on that uh, emptiness or the stress yes ma'am like yeah i've been keep on working i'm a radical student already but yeah. like uh, ups and downs there was a patch in which i wasn't able to do so thanks to apurba she was after my life join 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 so this time that was like because of her only i got pepped up and i've joined again the premium membership yeah. and uh, yeah so it's like i've started again okay So she can the thing is there is no reason to not enjoy food we all love food i love food too but if we are making it an obsession we need to ask ourselves why are we loosening our boundaries our personal boundaries that means even for food and that means the same for the stress or something that is not going right in your life okay why what is it inside us that is allowing others to invade or come into my space to make me either unhappy or create that vacuum or if that is stress why am i going through that stress because as we know we are the ones who create all the situations that we are responsible for all the situations that we go through in life the others are not we are responsible directly we feel you know that it is because of them but it is not it is only because we allow it even if when we were children when we were small even if things were happening at that point of time to us and we of course didn't have that command and control you know of uh, in terms of balance of power ha right? na but if we decided to become frightened or if we decided to become absolutely terrorized by situations and hide or run away or you know sort of uh, lean on the factor of fear lean on that emotion of fear or feeling scared so magnetically the vibrations and the frequency of fear was so high that like a magnet it would keep attracting situations that continue to make us feel fearful stressed unhappy or whatever else so throughout life that continues to be a pattern with us so 
whatever is happening in our lives, we are responsible, no one else. Mm. So in the same way, we are responsible by looking for the very, very, uh, how would I call it? Uh, I won't call it easy option. I would call it, uh, um, uh, what should I call it? You know, the escapism. Thank you. Escapism that we go to food. Okay. So yes, you started 18 years ago, which is fine. No problem. Everybody does it. Hum log mein bhi bahut khaya. <laughs> Khate pite ghar ke log hain type. <laughs> yeah, now that it is considered bad. <laughs> so if you decide mentally, now this is a mental exercise because the filter mind and the conscious mind, they work together. You know, it's like, if I should say it on media or not, it's like a political party, you know, they keep forming uh, partnerships. Yeah. So the conscious mind and the filter mind, they work together. And because we know in the filter mind, we store all, all our uh, negatives, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all there in the filter mind and the conscious mind is the one that is connecting us to our supposed reality every day of our lives. So it doesn't allow, they don't allow between the two of them that either something should go down in the subconscious mind or something from the subconscious mind which is uh, should leave the space, sort of empty out the filter mind. They don't allow it. They work together. Now, if Shikha decides, right, today that, okay, enough is enough. I am going to enjoy my food, but if I'm having two rotis, I am going to eat one roti only, but I'll, you know, sort of open it up and make it look like two rotis mentally to myself so that my conscious mind thinks I'm eating two rotis, but I'm having only one roti. Ma'am, that part is only difficult, no? No, that, that. That. Yeah, so this is just, I mean, at the conscious level that I'm trying to suggest that make that effort. You have to. If you see that you're eating uh, out of turn also when you shouldn't be, are you drinking enough water even though it is winter? Are you allowing yourself, you know, the physical exercise? Are you allowing mobility to yourself? Now, these are all conscious thoughts. And these are the ones that have been suppressed. So why not reach out to Radical to help us that I R5 my weakness. Okay. Or I transform and transcend my uh, escapism. Or I R5 my inability to manage my compulsions. These are all compulsive acts. These are not something that has been given to us as a, as a kind of rule. We made this rule. So when we want to feel complete in ourselves and change things in our lives, who can do it? Only us. Who can take that decision? Only us. I'm not saying stop eating all the laddus and everything if you like it. Instead of a full laddu, take half a laddu. Start like that. Don't make that mistake of thinking that I can't do it and it's not possible. People, uh, especially, again, I'm talking Delhi and the North Belt. This is a season to have all those wonderful gajaks and ravries and all that wonderful food that you get only in winter. Besan ka laddu. Besan ka laddu. Gajar ka halwa. <laughs> Gajar ka halwa. Thank you for reminding me. Maybe I'll also get it made. But you can make gajar ka halwa not with sugar. You can make it with uh, dates, you know, crushed dates. I mean, it's not a cooking lesson here. What I'm saying, there are options that we can think of doing it. But work on your R5, whatever comes to you as a thought. That um, escapism you said, which is a great, great word to use. Compulsion, you know, that you're not uh, compulsive eating. Work on that. Work on my uh, need to, um, uh, what should I say? I ask five, my inability 
to what? Check. I'm to just giving you control my hunger pangs. Everything. Whatever you feel like saying. But let me say what radical has to say to you to continue to be be happy even in the eating to enjoy that eating. How can you do it? Okay. And it's not no, about eating. I'm not happy in eat. I don't feel happy after eating. You know, first though I uh -huh. eat, and then so that's too, guilt. So yeah. work on your guilt. So you then I live in guilt. guilt. Why I have eaten? Why I know I'm yeah. doing wrong, but still I'm doing it while eating. Also, uh -huh. I'm feeling guilty, but I'm eating. So, so here you're doing. There's guilt, and there's self sabotage. Now look at these words. They're not small, right? Why are you doing it? So we need to check on that. But let's see what Radical has to tell you to make make you feel good about yourself. Okay? okay. Let's see. It says... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Left positivity chakra. <laughs> Incredible. This is SL13. Reminder that all that you do, you do for the greater good. So if you're not doing for the greater good, you need to take a check on that and work towards that positivity to make all that is good to happen in your life. Radical is guiding you today that don't let it pass, that whatever you're doing, you're doing for the greater good. But is it the greater good in terms of what you are allowing your body and you know to go through? Maybe not. So take a call. And it says, all that I do, I do for the greater good. Yeah? Okay. This is SL13. Okay. And when you've achieved a certain level of mental control on your not habits, on whatever you think you can start. Take baby steps. You don't have to suddenly jump from zero to 100. Go step by step. If you're, As I said, if you're eating rice, eat your rice. But maybe put in a lot more vegetables and dal and everything instead of the rice part of it. Rice ko thoda karo. You know, there's a scientist who had said, one of these uh, food scientists, that whatever you want to eat, just take it in a bowl. So choose a bowl. Whichever size. Itna bada lena hai, itna bada. And whatever you want to eat, like if you're eating rice, that means you need the dal and things like that in it. Put the dal in it, put the vegetable in it, put the rice and just that much. And if you eat slowly, it fills you up. Because it, it takes... Slowly. Yes. It, it, it takes the mind half an hour to uh, you know understand the process, the stomach and everything realizes only after half an hour that, oh, I'm full. Haven't you noticed sometimes when you're really greedy and you eat a lot, that time you can eat a lot. But after about half an hour, you start feeling, oh my God, my stomach is bursting. Ma'am, that so half an hour is too much time for me to make my body understand I've eaten a lot already. No, the body understands itself, okay? So you can work yeah. on this, okay? Yes, ma'am. Great. Okay, so who else Thank is you, ma'am. You're welcome. Reena, anything I can do for you today? Yes, 100%. Okay. Apurva, as usual, she will be talked to last. <laughs> She is such a darling. She agrees to it. I mean, thank you so much for that, Apurva. Yes, Rina, how can I help you? I'm enjoying every day as it comes. Mm -hmm. um, trigger hua hai, so I'm enjoying bed rest. Oh, good. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm much better, much better with radical okay. and with my exercise. Today, I'm much better. Right? Okay. Okay. But okay. Uh, absolutely... I'm enjoying yesterday. I couldn't go to my clinic. So be it. No problem. Okay. So I mean for others who are listening in and for others who will listen later. Look at the difference. That she says that I was not well and uh, I'm enjoying every day and I'm enjoying this bed rest also. 
So when you're not well, you have a back problem. At the same time, you're learning to enjoy it. What are you doing? You are talking to your body and telling your body that it's okay. We are in it together. And we are going to come out of everything ourselves. But you take that rest. Because when you rest, then I'm the best. Absolutely. Oh, wow. That's a nice statement. When you rest, <laughs> rest. then I'm the best. <laughs> yeah. So what are the other things which are your favorite things right now? Which is the most favorite thing for you these days, uh, Reena? Uh, 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 so yeah. I would like to share one thing. These days, like, you yeah. know, I wanted to join uh, Kathak. But mm -hmm. uh, due to some time constraint, I'm unable to do. So mm -hmm. I have a patient who is just five year old and she goes to Kathak class. So whenever she mm -hmm. comes, she teaches me the hand mudras, you know. Oh, how nice. Yeah, how does that so, make you feel? Are, I love it. You know, I just wait for her. Ki uh -huh. so, okay. Yeah, that uh, it, she brings that uh, child in me, you know, brings yes. out that child in me. Yes. So again, I like to stress this point also. Don't ever let that child in you ever feel neglected. Now, this is a difference. We are not talking of the inner children that we have created over time. We are talking of that child in you which allows you to live, to enjoy, to feel, to grow, to ha be happy. And literally even dance and learn from a five-year-old you know, the steps, how to dance. I mean, that's a, that's a wonderful thing that you're doing. Yeah. yeah. She inspires me so much, you know. She really yeah. inspires me. Okay. So I've told okay. her, okay. Hai, lena hai. Aaja ho khali. Milne aaja. <laughs> 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 no, of course, the vibrance that uh, the children bring in us is also very important. True. And they are, again, they come into our space only like this is an external child, it's not your own child or grandchild or anything like that. They are coming in your space again as a message from the universe that look, there are reasons for you to look forward to life, you know, and make it the best in terms of enjoying every minute of it. True. Uh, let me give you an example. Today uh, was a beautiful sunny day uh, in Delhi and the smog was also not there. So the skies were also clear. So my sister called and she said, why don't we go for a little picnic? I said, sure. But it was, a, uh, it was not a picnic where we packed our things and took with us. We planned and visited a place called Mehroli Archaeological Park, which is extension of Qutub Minar area. Everybody knows Qutub Minar. It's a beautiful park and with lakes and uh, the whole historical buildings. And of course, the park and etc. I made a reel also of it today. And what did we do after we did just three of us, her husband, she, and me? After we'd walked around, we found a little patch of shade. We sat down over there. And I told my brother in law, why don't you sing a song? So he started singing. And he sings beautifully, of course. And then after some time, he says, why don't you join for me? So I started singing with him. Then we decided, okay, let's sing all the duets that are possible that we can remember. Wow. So it was, it was such a fulfilling time in the afternoon. And there was a little cafe over there where we had our lunch. Yeah? That was our picnic. But after some time, what happened? People who were walking around that whole complex, gradually started coming towards us, you know, and they just sat there. And they said, ek or sunao, ek or sunao. So we had such a brilliant, unplanned, wonderful day today. So everything doesn't have to be planned also, but you can learn to enjoy. Okay. So if we had decided just to have our picnic and walk around and go back home, that would have been good too. But there we started and then it became such fun that we didn't get away from there for two hours. So yeah, we can learn to enjoy every minute of our life. And whether you sing or you don't sing, whether you dance or you don't dance, whether you paint or you don't paint, it doesn't matter. What matters is to find that little spot which helps you to understand <laughs> what happiness is. How happiness can be nurtured 
and what you can do to make happiness a part of your growth and life. So I'll read a reading for you, uh, Rina. Yeah, sure. Let's see what Radical says for you today. Right. Wow. Left uniqueness chakra. AL6. <laughs> Reminder to be happy, seeing others happy as you appreciate your and others' individual role and experiences. So true. So true. for you, so with that little girl coming in your life, so I, cher yeah. so I cherish and focus on my uniqueness and my unique opportunities. Thank you. I Thank cherish you so much. and focus on my uniqueness and my unique opportunities. Thank, Thank you, Rina. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so Apurva. Yes, tell me. Yes, ma'am. So, hmm. ma'am, uh, for me, my favorite things are basically all those little, little memories that like I have kept with me. Like hmm. uh, if a favorite person has given me a toffee, so I've kept the wrapper. If I have walked the park with somebody and I have picked up a stick, so I have kept that with me. So these mm -hmm. are the kind of, or maybe a teacher offered me a fruit cake, so I kept the wrapper of the fruit cake with me. She doesn't know, but I have it with me. So those are the small, small kind of favorite things that I have. And apart from that, uh, I used to run. So my medals, they are very dear to me, very favorite. And then I remember that when I ran in the uh, Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium for the first time in my life, they gave us those numbers behind our backs with those on that small, small square pieces of jute paper. Yes, yes, with that yes. with so okay. these are the little, little things I like to keep with me. And wow, so these, are, these become memorabilia, you know, they become reasons for happy memories. But yeah. I think this is very unique that you have the wrapper and the stick and things like that also. And yeah. as long as they are associated with happy memories, yeah, they should continue to keep giving you a reason to feel warmth and loved and cared and nourished in the circumstances that you received them, right? And that yes. is enough to keep us feel, uh, make us feel cherished and move forward. And sometimes if we are not feeling too good about it, we can look at these wrappers and yeah. remember the happiness that is associated with it. Lovely. That is absolutely marvelous. That just shows that you are a very sensitive human being. And with that sensitivity, that is why you are able to now, you know, be in a space. It allowed you to come into radical completely. Because in radical, it is all about being sensitive to others' needs, sensitive to understand ourselves, sensitive to understand others and deliver what we can, contribute what we can with sensitivity. Right. So just cherish your sensitivity and the brilliance in that sensitivity. I think that would be a brilliant, this is a conscious, a uh, continuous uh, maybe message that those wrappers and that stick and the middle, uh, the, 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 the uh, numbers are yeah. trying to tell you. Because... <clears throat> When you talk of medals, I'm reminded that when I received my medal for the National Games when I went as a 13-year-old, so once in a while when I look at that medal, I'm only reminded of one happy incident. I was the youngest in the team for that hurdles. Wow. I was the youngest and uh, they converted the event from uh, junior AT, uh, hurdles to senior because there were less people in the junior. So imagine uh, me and another girl had to run with the seniors. The other girl was from Karnataka and I was from Delhi. So my coach, what did he do? He came to me, but I had no idea because everything is, you know, you know, you have to uh, count the number of steps you take in terms of how you jump the hurdles, etc. So he came running to me. He says, don't you feel afraid? It's very simple that instead of, you know, let's say uh, the first run up used to be five steps, jump, 
then one, two, three, jump. He says, instead of five, it's eight now. Don't worry, everything else is the same. So you can do it. So I was, I was near tears. What does he tell me? <clears throat> he says, look, today if you win, if you come first, uh, no, if you come third, I'll buy you a chop bar. I was a 13 year old. If you come second, I'll buy you a, a cassata. Okay. But if you come first, I'm going to give you a banana split. You know, as a uh, gift today, you'll go to the restaurant, all of us. So I said, okay. And then, of course, when the race happened, so I came second. So I ran across and he jumped. He was so happy. You know, we didn't expect it. I didn't expect it. And what do I do? I go to him and I said, will I get my kasata now? That was the only thing I told him. So every time I look at my medal, I'm reminded of the kasata. But I'm reminded of that encouragement in challenging times that a coach, now a coach could be, you know, your master, your guide, your universe, anybody giving you that if something happens, you don't have to worry. Steps may change. The count may change. But the process is the same. So don't run away from that reality. Face it. You'll be able to do it. And I think metaphorically, it's a beautiful lesson that I had learned, you know, and it stayed with me. So that particular medal, not because it was won at a national games, but because of this message that I had received from my um, coach is more valuable to me than anything else. Right? So Apurva, keep growing with your sensitivity and let me have a, let's see what Radical tells you to do further. Wow. FR47, write gratitude for grounding chakra. Reminder to perceive your grounding factors as facilitating factors. So your sensitivity is a, is a blessing. It's a brilliance. Continue to be with that, you know, to deal with others in a more sensitive, loving, caring, giving manner, right? That's all I can tell you. It says, uh, I remain grateful to my grounding factors, enabling me to fly high. I remain grateful to my grounding factors, enabling me to fly high. Yeah? Thank you, ma'am. Great. Does that resonate with you? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. I've heard that statement so many times. <laughs> you know, um, I think I can keep it as an open thing for all of us. Most of us have said over here that I, this statement has been coming to me constantly. Now, look at this beauty. Look at this, what Radical does. It keeps sending you the same statement again and again, very gently, very beautifully through others. So that <clears throat> it's like a guide, you know, it's going on guiding you that you're on the right path. Continue with it. Don't worry. Still continue with it. Keep the patience. Continue with it. You will reach your ultimate uh, goal in terms of whatever the goal setting you have done for yourself on your life's journey and life's path. So simple. All because of what Radical does to all of us. So I am in complete great gratitude to the Master and Radical for what it does for all of us. And it's such a see easy and simple way with just healing and affirmation that we can learn to give ourselves and to others as such a big contribution in terms of what can be done, right? So if everybody agrees with me, can I get a raised hand or a, or a cap or something? I like claps. <laughs> okay, great. So, <laughs> great. No, I'm just being a little childish myself. I like to have claps. So everybody likes claps. So I think that is all there would be. There is one more person here, Jayashree. Would you like a reading or is it okay for you? Or you have written something in the chat? I don't know. No. Okay. So I think we've met our time slot today. Yeah. It's, yeah. So thank you very much for being here, all of you. I think it's been a nice, cozy, warm 
feeling of being together to share our favorite things and keep staying with your favorite things and we'll meet again next friday with another session with something interesting all the best